It's been a little while since I've done an OBS tutorial, and I'm pretty excited to show you this kind of different take on them, as I want to explore a set of settings that I've ignored for most of my tutorials. The simple output mode, as it has a really hidden kind of neat feature that I used to use all the time, totally forgot about, and then one of our Patreon supporters, Ben, uh, stumbled back upon and we went through a little bit rediscovering it, and it's pretty handy. A good way to get literally the best possible quality recordings you can get out of OBS Studio. But it comes at a cost that you might not want to make. But it's virtually lag-free, like it is the most high-performing encoding you can also probably do on the software. So we're going to check it out. The Mod Mic Wireless can boldly go where no mic has gone before. This microphone can attach to any headphones, requires no additional wires, features very low latency, a dual capsule microphone, 12 hour battery life, and LED indicators on the receiver so you know when you're muted and or when the battery is running low. And you can basically run your entire house without ever losing a signal. What more could you ask for? Learn more by clicking the link in the video description. All right, so for this configuration, you don't actually need any plugins in OBS or anything like that. This is what my recording profile typically looks like when I'm doing desktop tutorials or something like that. And if you were unaware that NV Inc, NVIDIA's GPU encoder, does have its own lossless mode, you can try that out for yourself if you're worried about uh, performance or just not having the disk space for the insane bit rates that this uses. Uh, but it is still X264, so some compression side effects will still be there inherent to the encoder, but this is arguably the best possible quality NV ink you can get, aside from jumping from 10 series to 20 series cards and the new build that's coming out very soon. But you can actually get some better lossless in a couple different ways. Now, if you don't actually have an NVIDIA GPU, you don't have NV ink, or you're just generally having performance issues, a way that you can get really high quality, nearly lossless files with still using X264 is actually here in the simple output mode. So typically I've always covered and recommended the advanced output mode here. Now, if you change it to simple, these presets are actually really good. And some of the OBS people have kind of been mad at me for always, you know, saying to skip over it, but some of them are actually pretty good. And I have used the one that I will be recommending in a moment, plenty of times. I just forgot about it until recently because I haven't used it in a while. Uh, but the default setup for indistinguishable quality here, large file size, is X264, which is the software encoder, but it's configured specifically to have minimal CPU impact. So minimal resource load on your computer while you're recording. It won't slow down your computer or your games or whatever you're recording, but will still record a very high quality file. It will just be a much bigger size than maybe what you typically would record but the file size trade-off is made for being higher performing. So this is an option, or if you do have an NVIDIA card, even still using this indistinguishable quality selection, you can actually still use NV Ink. although I have found this to have some performance hiccups sometimes when I was doing testing earlier, so eh. But if you wanna go truly lossless, if you wanna go a step further, if you need to really upscale your footage past 1080p to skip past YouTube's bad 1080p compression and shoot it up to 4K, or if you need to zoom in 500 times on a screen like I do for my tutorials, going past this, getting rid of X264 or H264 based encoding altogether is desirable. So you can choose a lossless quality, tremendously large file size. And it even gives you a warning about this because it is ridiculous. I'm going to hit yes. So there's a trade-off here. So in this mode, this uses the what's called the UT video codec. It is a free codec that is in a long series of completely, well, nearly lossless, you know, completely lossless AVI files, which means it's nearly uncompressed. You're getting ridiculous bit rates. You're getting file sizes that are truly massive. And if you're doing any sort of high resolution or high refresh rate capture, you will need a NVMe SSD, which is a PCIe solid state drive. Your standard spinning hard drive or sometimes even your SATA hard drives will not work. You need really fast drives. If you're just doing 1080p, a spinning hard drive still might not work, but a standard SATA SSD will do fine. I was recording some 1440p stuff to a SSD. 
uh, but I have found some of my 4K 60 FPS recordings to go to almost two gigabits per second, which is a, a lot of data to be writing. For example, I'm actually using it to record this video right now. You can see just recording this pretty much static screen with very little moving, we are at 88 mega or no, <laughs> 896 right now megabits per second. Typically when you're streaming, you're streaming at 6 megabits per second. Recording, most people do like 40 megabits per second. This is almost 900 megabits per second. Just in the 4 minutes that I've been recording, I have already recorded 28 gigabytes of file space. This is what I'm talking about. And this is an easy to encode scene because nothing's really going on. You involve a game, it starts to get pretty crazy. But you do this, you hit apply, you hit OK, and it records without using a whole lot of system load. Uh, I am on a very high-end Intel Core i9 processor, but you can see here, despite all my Chrome tabs and having two OBS windows open and recording this, it's not using a whole lot of system processing. And I did some game recording tests with a few different games on my Intel Core i7-8700K running the games. Using this mode only added about mm, 5 to 10% extra CPU usage over top of the game itself. Whereas if you go back to the indistinguishable mode, that added up to 25% extra CPU load. And Envy Inc. only added about 10 or whatever, since it is on the graphics card. But Envy Inc. in this mode, for whatever reason, was not super stable for me. Now, there is a downside, and there's a couple more downsides I'll mention in a minute. But there's a downside to doing it in the simple mode here, in that it only records one audio track. So your desktop sound, your microphone, whatever, is all mixed into one, and you need to balance it via the audio mixer down here. Typically, that's fine. But if you need multiple audio tracks, currently is not possible in the public release at the time of recording of OBS Studio. However, in the very next update that is coming out, which is a build I have that I'm showing you here, this is a very rough beta build, they have actually enabled uh, multiple output tracks for what we're going to do here. So if you want multiple tracks, you need to go back to advanced. And instead of standard, we're going to use the custom output FFmpeg mode, which is super advanced, super complicated, but I'm going to make it easy for you. Click it. Under container format, make sure you have AVI selected. And then the defaults are pretty much good to go. UT video should be the default. If it's not, scroll down and select it. PCM S16 LE should be the default audio. That is just uncompressed wave audio. If it's not, select it. It should even be identified by default encoder. So if it, it's not what's selected for you, just find it in the list. Copy these settings nearly exactly. Video bitrate and audio bitrate will be ignored, so don't worry about those. Definitely change your output location because it will reset it to a super fast SSD or some really fast hard drive RAID or something that you have set up. The only thing you really need to worry about in terms of numbers here is the keyframe interval. You know, typically for streaming and recording settings, that is set to two seconds. In this specific setup, I have 60 FPS, so two seconds would be 120 frames. If you have 30 FPS, that would be 60 frames. You get the idea. Easy to do two times your number. And then lastly, you have your audio tracks, which again, in the current public OBS 22.0.2 build, you can only select one track, but in the upcoming build, you can select all six. And so I do have that selected. Then you hit OK, and then you start recording and cry because your hard drive fills up almost immediately. There is one more downside, however, that you need to be aware of, and that is while UT video is incredibly fast to encode on the fly, and that is why it used to be incredibly popular back before OBS had taken off, uh, when we were all using DX Tori to record our videos, uh, Lagarith and UT video were the most popular codecs because they were super fast to record on the fly for, you know, when 1080p 60fps was taking off. But the trade off is. It is super slow to decode, which means playing it back in your media player may be laggy or sluggish. If you upload it straight to YouTube, which I I, I, I will be surprised given how big the files are. This one's 500 megs for five seconds. Uh, it will take YouTube a little while to process it. If you bring it into a video editor, it will be super slow on the timeline and cause your render times to increase because it is slow to decode the video file. However, since it is lossless, you can transcode it using Adobe Media Encoder or FFmpeg or some other video converter to a more friendly mezzanine codec file, such as Adobe, or not Adobe, Apple ProRes, uh, DNxHR, 
or GoPro Cineform, which are all nearly lossless codecs, but are much faster in your video editor to edit. If you don't know what any of that means, just know that it will be slow in your video editor if you use these files directly. Secondarily, your video editor may not recognize this file in the first place, so you may need to convert it anyway. If it doesn't, if you're in something like Premiere or whatever, you'll get an error like this suggesting that it can't import the file. Don't freak out. Go to videohelper.com. I will have this specific link in the description below, but there is a UT Video Codec Suite that you will need to install at least on Windows and Mac. It's completely free. Been around for decades at this point, pretty much. Uh, you just install it and leave it alone, and then programs like Adobe Premiere will import the footage. Unfortunately, DaVinci Resolve does not like any AVI container codecs whatsoever and will not import it at all. That's frustrating since I'm in the, you know, I'm using that more and more, but Premiere will import it fine. One more caveat and trade-off that I want you to be aware of. If you do enable multiple audio tracks like I showed you in upcoming OBS releases, you can see here, this five second file has two tracks. Adobe Premiere may still only import the first track. Your mileage may vary. Premiere is super picky about multiple audio tracks on AVI files. This used to be, again, a huge issue back when we, a lot of us were using DX Story. However, you can use the method that I showed in my OBS Masterclass to ex use Audacity to extract the files to waves, or I will have an FFmpeg script. If you're familiar with the PyWin context software I showed off that my buddy Dylan made in our Discord server, uh, that adds options to your right-click menu, I will have an FFmpeg script that you can add to PyWin context so that you can automatically right-click, hit Extract to Individual WAV Files, and it will spit out all those tracks as WAV files that you can then line up in a nested sequence in your video editor. Again, yours may import it just fine. Premiere can be super finicky about it, and Vegas Pro should have no issue with it. But if you have one that doesn't support multiple tracks in the first place, you'll need to do this. If you're unfamiliar, if you don't know what any of that means and you're unfamiliar with PyWin Contacts, I will have a video in the description. Please go watch it. This tool has changed my life. Otherwise, that's it. It is it's something that's built into OBS Studio that, you know, everyone has access to. And if you never ventured into the advanced output tab, then you may have already discovered it because most <laughs> people like me don't spend a whole lot of time over here in the simple tab and forget about these options. But this codec is amazing. It really helps you get the next step up in video quality if you're worried about that. If you're not worried about that, honestly, it means nothing to you. And I will do, I will have shown on screen some comparisons. What they are are, I did the different recordings with the lossless mode here, with the indistinguishable mode with X264 and with NV Ink, and then compare it to shadow play and just kind of show that footage is recorded at 1440p, upscaled to 4K, and then I zoomed in on a couple bits just for use case example, and you can see the encoder differences. Keep in mind that it's run back through YouTube compression, but if you don't see a difference because of that, then you can see the diminishing returns and why it may not be important to you. But for people like me, it's important for a lot of different uses, and I wanted to share because it's kind of a little secret nugget that most people don't know about. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry, this got a little long-winded. I had to re-record, and so I got to integrate some extra points that were just kind of added in in the last take. And yeah, hope you enjoyed. Trying to get back on the OBS tutorial train here on the channel. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and OBS guides. They have a major update coming soon that I'm super stoked to share. Not ready just yet. We'll be a couple weeks. And I'll see you in the next one.